Let's go ahead and take this simple web page that I've outlined and mark it up in HTML. We'll be using all of the semantic tags that we've been discussing. I like to keep my plan easily visible, so I'll just put it here in the lower right hand portion of my screen. And then of course I have my code editor over here on the left and we'll keep a browser window open so that we can preview our final results. I've already set up the basic structure of my web page. This of course is necessary for any web page to render properly. And what we'll do is we'll just jump in and start coding. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create the header section. So I'm going to create a header element and inside this element, I need two children elements. These are going to be a section element and we'll go ahead and give this section a class of branding. Remember that the classes don't do anything by themselves, but once we learn CSS, we will be using the class and ID values so that we can uniquely identify the various elements within our page. Inside the section tag, I'm going to have my image. So I already have some images in my image folder and the image that we want to display is going to be an image called logo.ping. This is an image of a whale, so we'll give it an alt tag. After the image, I'll go ahead and I'll create an H1. The H1 is going to say whale wisdom, and then I'll create an H2. The next item that's going to be a direct descendant of the header is going to be my nav element. This is going to be the global navigation for my website. It is very common that you will create navigational elements using an unordered list. After all, the navigation is simply a list of links. So semantically, it probably makes sense to use a list here. Inside the list items, I will have a tags. And for right now, we're going to make null tags. You can create a null tag by making the href value equal to hash or the pound symbol. This simply is going to ensure that the link looks like a link, but if you click it, it's not going to go anywhere. We do use the null links as placeholders when we're not sure what the links may be. And sometimes you will even use them when you're incorporating other scripting languages. But for our purposes here, we just don't know what those links are. So I'm going to use the hash as a null link for these navigational items. And that does it for our header. We're going to go ahead and we're going to move on to the next area of our website. This is going to be the section and I'm going to call this section element. I'm going to give it a class name of hero. It is very common that you will hear elements that are used as banners at the top of the page be referred to as hero images. So that's where that terminology is coming from. Inside of this section with the class of hero, I'm going to create an article and inside my article tag, we're going to create an H group. The H group will have both an H1 and an H2. I'll go outside my H group and I'm going to create a paragraph. Right now I'm just using some placeholder lorem epsom text. So I'm going to place that there. And after the paragraph tag, we're going to create a button. Now, we can use a button element that could be an option, or we could simply use a link and style it to look like a button. I'm going to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and create an a tag. Once again, I'm just going to use my hash for the href value. And we're going to go ahead and use the text that says read more. In addition to the href value, I'm going to assign a class of button. And this is so that I can style this link differently from any other links that I might have on my page. Now I'm done with that section of the web page. So I'm going to move down to the next area. This is going to be my main element. So this contains all of the main content. And for this, we're going to create an article. My article is going to have a class of type. Ultimately, we're going to need three of these, but let's just go ahead and build one out from scratch. I'm going to come to the very bottom of my page and just hit some page returns so I can push the code up so it'll be easier for you to see what I'm doing. I'll go ahead and I'll make an image tag 
And once again, I'm going to go into the images folder and access the image that I'm interested in creating. So this first one is my sperm whale. After the image, I have an H1, an H2, and a paragraph with some lorem ipsum text. Now, I am simply going to copy this article element because I have two additional article elements that are, for the most part, pretty much identical. The only difference is going to be the image and the H1 and H2 content, but it's much quicker for me just to copy paste since the structure is going to be the same. And finally, we'll do that one more time. This is going to be for our humpback whale. After the main tag, we're going to go ahead and create our footer. And the footer is going to contain a unordered list, which is going to have our social media icons. So similar to what we did in the navigation, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to have a list of links that also contain images. So the images are going to be links and these will be my social media icons. After the unordered list, I just have a paragraph with some copyright information. And as long as we save our page, we can check it out in the browser. And this is what we have. You can see that some of my images don't show up. That's because these images are white. So when I grab them and move them, you can actually see that they're there, but we're not going to see them right now because the background color is matching the color of the images. So they are present. We can see them if we grab them and drag them off of the page, but we won't see them by default. So just keep that in mind. Now, obviously this does not look like my initial drawing, my initial idea of what I wanted to create. As I mentioned before, we're going to need to use CSS to do that. But the important thing that we're taking away from this exercise is the fact that we've now created a semantically correct web page. All of the elements that exist on my page have some sort of meaning. So if a screen reader comes to my page, this page is now accessible. This page is going to be friendly to any sort of user. The semantic markup that we're using here is conveying information about the meaning of each element in the document through proper selection and proper hierarchy. This is very important since any sort of device that comes here, they are now going to have more meaning about the content. When we write semantic markup, we use HTML elements correctly so that the markup is both human readable and machine readable.